All right, here we go. Let's do this. Welcome to a very special edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live, presented by CRC Industries, everyone. Uh, first off, well, guys, before we even get going, uh, big shout out to Chris Vanderwalk, who was like the first one to post in the chat on Facebook tonight from the One Lap of America. And I, I, I got your, your offer um, yesterday, Chris. Uh, uh, he, he's out running, running One Lap right now. Um, so we, we got super going on tonight. So love to, love to talk to you later, later about, about one lap, but get, get back to work for God's sakes. Um, okay. Here's what's going on tonight. We are at, first off, you might notice that, uh, I am not in my usual studio accommodations. We are in this uh, fine hotel next to the fire because we are at the 2020 Toyota Supra North American media launch. We are the first journalists, maybe uh, some of the first civilians outside of Toyota to drive the 2020 Toyota Supra. So we um, are, are um, going to be bringing you as much information about that car tonight as we possibly can. Uh, I see some of our friends over here on YouTube already. I got YouTube chat over here. If you guys have any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. I got Facebook over here, uh, Dinesh wants to know where the bathrobe is. Hey man, let's let's see how the uh, how the likes and how the shares go, and then we'll see about maybe getting the bathrobe, um, the the fancy spa robe from the Salamander Hotel here in Middleburg, Virginia. We'll see about getting that involved. Um, so here uh, here's here's the deal. The the driving impressions for the 2020 Toyota Supra are embargoed until Sunday at 6.01 p.m. Eastern Time. So what that means is I can talk about lots of stuff tonight, but I cannot really give you any sort of driving impressions of the vehicle yet. And the reason that manufacturers do this is because there's several waves of journalists coming through this week, and they want to give everybody a fair shake to get their story out at the exact same time. So I really can't tell you much about how the car drives, but what I can do is I can show you lots of material that I recorded today directly from the people at Toyota while they tell you the story of the car. There's a lot of really, really interesting stuff in, in here. And I, I, I invite you to stick around because this is not something that you're going to normally get the chance to see as a, a non-journalist. This is essentially what I was doing today, sitting in these, in these conferences and, and listening to these people talk. And there is some really, really interesting in information here. So uh, John Welsh wants to know, how did it drive? So I can't tell you that, but maybe from my body language or from my incredibly uh, rugged, rock solid poker face, you'll be able to pick up tiny bits of information as we go along. I do have some in-car footage of the car on the uh, Shenandoah circuit here at Summit Point Motorsports Park, so you'll be able to hear what it sounds like, be able to kind of see some of the lines I was, I was taking around that circuit, really fun little circuit, my first time there. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're getting caught up on, so Lucius wants to know about the cup holders. Yes, there are two cup holders, they are well placed. I had my phone in them all day taking some uh, uh, some data with our Apex Pro and, and talking to my in-car camera. Um, and our top fan, Alan, says it is snowing in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That is crazy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's get rolling here. Um, we, we, we got some questions coming in. The first thing I, 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 wanted, I want to address is, so the, the, the first thing we, we, we hear whenever, whenever we mention this A90 chassis Supra is some smart ass inevitably comes up with oh, a nice BMW. Well, you know what, it is a nice BMW. And, and, and I, I don't understand why you are deriding a car by comparing it to a, a, a sister car that is incredibly capable and, and, and very nice. There's a lot of technology shared between the BMW Z4 and this A90 Super, by which I mean basically the chassis. Um, and the Toyota folks will talk about that as, as, as we go through. So, yeah, and uh, th thanks for the, uh, for, for the feedback there, there Michael. We... we are excited now that we have kind of a road rig to, to broadcast this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with, um, uh, and I, I forget I forget the cat's name, but this is um, this is kind of an overview of of the car from our first press conference this morning, and we'll run we'll run through this. Uh, let me see what I got. I got seven nine. 
15. I got about a half an hour of a video here, and it's all it's all quite interesting. So I am just going to to start running through this stuff, and there's a lot of interesting stuff between the, the, these videos. Some of them are, I think the longest one's about seven minutes. Um, we'll come back, we'll answer the questions I can. But here we go with, um, with the first one, and this is just gonna give you kind of an overview of some of Toyota's development of the car and the positioning, and I will kind of ride the audio levels as best I can. So, uh, away we go. I'm so, uh, so glad to be here. I met some of you uh, either last night or before. Um, and just good morning, welcome to Virginia. We're so glad that uh, you're here to join us today for this, to experience this phenomenal, phenomenal vehicle. I can tell you that for years we've heard the same thing over and over, and it's bring Supra back. I've heard it from dealers, media, neighbors, family, strangers. <laughs> Um, and just uh, by telling people that uh, I work on Supra, that, that adds another, another element to it. Um, but we can finally say it's back. And uh, you can all be the first ones to drive it today. It's going to be a great day, and we know you're going to enjoy this vehicle. You see, this is not a car that we needed to make, but this is a car that we wanted to make. And we didn't set out to create just another sports car, we set out to create a Supra. Supra is synonymous with performance, handling, and speed. And it started back in 1979 with 110 horsepower A40, followed by the 145 horsepower A60 that went on sale in 1982. And the first three liter Supra, the A70 in 1986. And I know many of you in this room were probably fond of those vehicles. But then came the shockwave, the A80. The fourth generation Supra hit the streets in 1993 with less weight, more power than any previous generation Supra. But you know, it's interesting. The A80 did well in the 90s, but it wasn't until the Fast and the Furious in 2001 that its popularity really, really took off. And that was three years after we stopped selling it in the States. Think about that, one of the most popular cars in 2001 hadn't been on sale for three years, thus starting its legendary status. But now the legend is back. The A90 has a lot to live up to and we totally understand that. But when Chief Engineer Tetsuya Tada, Tada-san is in the back. Uh, good morning, it's great to see you, uh, I'm very happy to introduce my new baby sister. <laughs> You're going to have plenty of time with Tadasan today, uh, please, uh, he, he's available for, uh, for comments and interviews. But um, when he first started engineering the car, he focused on connecting the driver with the emotions of a true sports car and what a true sports car can deliver. And that starts with really significant details, 335 horsepower, 365 pound-feet of torque, a 50-50 weight distribution, and a zero to 60 time of 4.1 seconds. That's the quickest Toyota ever produced. You've been reading the specs, obviously, since Detroit, but to fully understand the performance of the Supra, you have to get behind the wheel. You'll see what I mean today, but today would never have come to fruition if it didn't live up to the expectations of our global CEO, Akio Toyota and master driver. He had a lot to say about this sports car and what it needed to be. And once he greenlit the vehicle, we knew we had something to get excited about. The development of this car started back in 2012. One of our lead design studios, Calty Design Research in Newport Beach, who you'll hear from in a minute, presented a concept to Akio, which is now known as the FT1. The reaction to FT1 in Detroit told us all we needed to know. It was time to bring Supra back. Current industry dynamics favor higher volume models, so partnerships are beneficial to low volume niche sports car. And when looking at the landscape, BMW was the leading manufacturer of inline six cylinder engines, which was a must for any future Supra. So we entered into a partnership to work together on an engine and chassis. 
And I believe we both learned from this experience. Once those pieces were in place, we worked independently to give Supra its own distinct character that honored its past, but also pushed it forward into the future. The suspension is uniquely tuned with a priority placed on nimble handling, which maximizes the 50-50 weight distribution. And the exterior design is truly a Supra design. It houses many elements from our sports car lineage, from the double bubble roof, to the shaping of the windows, to the rear spoiler. The final product is something we're very proud of. And we're confident that Super Fanatics will be proud of it too. We know there have been a lot of people waiting a very long time for Super to come back to the market. Everyone from sports car enthusiasts to the tuner market, and yes, the tuner market. They've been the loudest over the past 20 years. We recently held a measuring session for this Supra at SEMA's headquarters in Diamond Bar, California. And it had the highest attendance of any measuring session ever. We also set up a hand raiser website to connect with those interested in Supra and learn about some of the new Supra buyers. Since January, we've had over 40,000 hand raisers and people request more information. And of those 40,000, 90% are male, 25% are Hispanic, and 41% are from three states alone, California, Texas, and Florida. And this matches very, very well with the sports car market. And so this all obviously gives us very, uh, a lot of confidence that we're doing the right things. We started spreading the word about Supra during the Super Bowl. And we're going to launch a full campaign when it goes on sale in July. Because it's Supra, we have to go big. But before I show you a sneak peek at the commercial, I'm going to have to ask you uh, to just pause your, uh, your, your devices, if anybody's recording. I'm so, uh, so glad to be here. Okay, so there's uh, our, our first video. And a lot of questions came in during that one. So I, actually, you know what? That's kind of a, a nice little uh, peek into, into what I do for a living is is sit in a lot of these press conferences. Let me go through and um, and deal with a few of these questions while they're fresh on my mind. First off, I, I think it's really interesting that they, they gave a shout out to Fast and Furious and that the peak of fourth gen Supra popularity was um, two years after the car went off the market because of that movie. I think it's probably fair to say if it were not for, for that, that original film and that franchise, that nameplate would never have been 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 brought back. So that was that was uh, was fairly interesting. Um, so let's see. Uh, Steve wants to know were the were, were they test mules or actual production cars? The cars we drove today were what they call production spec cars. They they won't ever go on sale, but they were built in on the production lines in Austria. Uh, they were um, they're 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 basically. Um, exactly as you would go into a dealership and and buy one but they probably have uh you know non non legit vins that they're they're just being used for for internal communications um dinesh says he saw wheel bolts yeah uh i know the look it's 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 not a perfect world so uh that is that is one of the uh the bummers um the commercial that they we couldn't show you that they showed us was actually shot at road atlanta so I thought that was pretty cool. So if you see uh, another super commercial, they, they had some special effects to, to finish up on it and, and clean a few things up. But there was a, a great commercial shot at, uh, at, at Road Atlanta. And go through a few more of these questions. Um, so GT Motorsports wants to know, are we going to uh, get a project car when when they're released? Man, we got a lot of project cars going on right now, but... Um, <laughs> You know what? Come back Sunday. I'll have my driving impression video up Sunday afternoon. We'll talk a little bit about how the thing is is on track. And um, uh, th this is a car that is very much in our in our wheelhouse for for the market for what it can do. So I'm not sure if we'll end up with one. Um, one Dickmo wants to know why am I wasting people's time? My wife's been asking me that for 20 years. Uh, Dave Zahano says he knows Toyota PR and marketing doing the talking, but it really sounds like the ultimate driving machine. So 
one thing I, I need to tell you about people at so many of these car companies is there are car people engineering these these cars that you drive. I was talking to a lot of the engineers today about the MR2 that I own, it, but ultimately these are big companies. So there are there are incredibly enthusiastic, incredibly um, a, a, aggressive engineers designing and building these cars. There's a lot of layers to, for these cars to go through from the engineering table to the the marketplace. And there's a lot of there's a lot of filters in between those two things. So when you see a car that that comes out that's something even something like the Hyundai Veloster N, there's guys racing those cars that work for Hyundai every weekend. They're they're designing them, but they still have to sell them. So you, you rest assured that there are very enthusiastic, very very hardcore people building many of of the cars that you love, including the um, the folks uh, at at Toyota. Um, so Dave says, uh, he's pretty sure the Gran Turismo franchise is what was responsible for the WRX and Skyline coming stateside. It's interesting things coming up about that franchise too in a in a future video. Uh, Dinesh says, passionate engineers but soul sucking bean counters. Yeah, man, that's the that's the the yin and the yang going on right there, isn't it? Uh, and Calvin wants to know any talk of a manual in the future. I know dead horse, but if maybe if we are politely pers persistent. That is that that is a great way way to put it. There was a lot of talk about that at the press conferences today, and there was a lot of talk about future performance upgrades. And one thing you're going to see in in some of the videos I'm going to show you in a few minutes is Toyota is very very responsive to the aftermarket when it comes to this car. You saw the the SEMA measuring session. Um, yeah, they they know we are out here. So be be noisy, be be polite, but be noisy. Um, okay, so let's go to the uh, the second video here because we got um, we got uh, a bunch of stuff to get to. This is going to be the same dude telling you some different stuff, and here we go. 1500 Supras now will be special. They'll be special because they're called the Launch Edition car. They're available in red, white, and black. We have a few of you, a few of them uh, here for you to drive uh, today. They're highlighted by red mirror caps, matte black wheels, and a red interior. Supra will be available in three grades, I'm sorry, two grades, 3.0 and 3.0 premium, and they're distinguished by key interior differences that we'll go over in just a minute. Supra has a starting price under $50,000, $500 less expensive than a 1996 Supra Turbo cost 23 years ago, and about $100,000 cheaper than a 1996 <laughs> Supra Turbo cost at auction today. Those first 1500 launch editions will start just over $55,000. And well, actually we have 1,499 left to sell because the first one went for 2.1 million at the Barrett-Jackson auction in January. The proceeds from the auction were split between American Heart Association and the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Another advantage of buying a 2020 Supra is that each owner will receive a National Auto Sport Association membership and one high performance driving event day. And this is, uh, this is new news and again, another reason why we want people to experience the car on the track. We want to motivate them and inspire them. So that's the scoop on Supra, but before I turn it over to Alex Shen from uh, Calti, I want to take just a moment of, uh, to tell you about Supra's other 1,500 Supras now will be special. All right, did you catch that? Yeah, Angela says WTF. Every Supra launch edition comes with a NASA membership and a track day. So remember before I told you that there are people building these cars that are serious about these cars. I think that is some some evidence right right there. So yeah, that that is pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So let's let's deal, deal with some of these questions. Um, and uh, Greg Greg wants to know: Do they run on Shenandoah or Summit, Maine? Shenandoah, and uh, I, I will have some in car video of that coming up in a little bit. I've never run on Shenandoah before. It's a lot of fun, and um, can't really comment on whether or not it was a good showcase for the for the car yet. I can do that on Sunday, but um, I, I was it was it's a fun track. I would I would come back and run a time trial here or, or, or do 
something else. That stupid turn on top of the hill, though, is the most frustrating thing in the world. Um, okay, let's get some of our YouTube questions here. Uh, <laughs> Dick Poe's not giving me a hard time. It's all good, man. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, okay, Zerico uh, is asking about the ECU. Yeah, that question came up uh, t t today, and uh, some of the Toyota engineers were dealing about were talking about that with some of the other journalists. They were a little cagey about that. Um, I don't want to speak for them. There, there is some technology in in these cars that they they. They, they just can't be 100% upfront about because of, of trade secrets and various information. But um, if if I had to um, just put on my assumption hat here and 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 you know parse what I think they were trying to tell us is all of the programming in in these in these cars comes from Toyota. The hard some of the hardware for the physical ECU might be from BMW. All of the software is is Toyota. They they were very very adamant in letting us know that that all of the tuning of, of this car comes from the drivers at Toyota, the engineers at, at Toyota. They're very serious about that part. Um, okay, so let's. Yeah, uh, Mech asked about the, uh, the the free track day. Do you get to pick the track? The, the, apparently, this program just came together very, very recently with NASA. So that's something that I hope to have more information about. Uh, if you do, I don't know if you just get credit for a track day in your local area. If you get like a NASA uh, gift certificate or something, I don't know exactly the ins and outs of how it works. But again, that's a that's a fairly hardcore um, hard, hardcore way to introduce a car with a NASA membership and a track day. Okay, we're gonna, next we're going to go to a dude who is, um, uh, let's, let me go to the design guy next, because he's pretty interesting. Uh, so this is a guy from, from Calty, who is sort of the company that was contracted to do the actual design work on the car, and there's some interesting stuff here, there's, there's, you know, there's some marketing talk, but there's some, some pretty cool information here as well. So uh, we will we will go to this one next, and I will see you in five minutes and sixteen. You guys having fun so far? By the way, uh, I'll see you in five minutes and sixteen seconds. So here you go. Jen, chief designer for Calpy Design. Uh, for this car, I'm I'm especially proud of this new Supra. You know, this this car started out as a passion project at Calpy, um, and basically we opened up the whole. Uh, we opened up the project to all the designers. Typically, we assign people to them, but this time, um, on top of their work, we added this project. And I have to say, nobody, nobody refused. Everybody provided ideas. We had a tense discussion. <coughs> um, and I'm proud because this, this car was initiated by Calpy, uh, by our team at Calpy, to explore the possibility of bringing Super back. You know, when Akio Toyota became president, um, suddenly the whole mood changed, and. Uh, he gave a call to action for no more boring cars. Um, he gave hope to the company to make exciting cars again. Um, because he's such a car enthusiast, we knew the right time, it was the right time to propose a, a new modern sports car. The key goal of FT1 was to design an exciting, authentic, high performance, kick ass Halo sports car. Uh, for, the, for the Toyota brand to continue to build on the Wapadoki and fun to drive. From the very beginning, um, this was not just going to be another sports car. It was designed to be the next Supra. Uh, with Akio's strong, or Toyota's strong sports car heritage, we knew that FT1 was still in a long void of not having a Halo sports car. This included the last generation Supra, uh, a car that still had loyal enthusiasts, and even before that, the icon in 2000. FT1 had to be an extension of this historic image. Um, the key term we used to imagine FT1 was function sculpting, a unique fusion of both rational and emotional values. We wanted, to, we wanted it to appear as if it was being shaped by the forces of wind, further enhancing the demanding cooling requirements of a high, out, of a high output motor and high speed aerodynamic the deeply sculpted forms, carve out inlets and outlets, were functional demand, and really an ode to the last generation Supra. The 
wraparound windshield and side glass openings are a distinctive nod to the 2000 GT. And you know, when it was time to present the FT1 concept to our bosses, um, we decided to add an element to the review process that would get them to feel the true excitement of FT1. We worked with the guys that created Gran Turismo and added a virtual FT1 to the game. And when Akio saw and drove um, the FT1 in Gran Turismo, he gave, it, he gave a thumbs up to building the concept car. Oh, and by the way, he, he actually beat his, his actual time at Fuji Speedway um, in the video game. So he was really happy about that. Um, and you know, an overwhelmingly positive global response, um, coupled with the knowledge of Toyota's agreement with BMW, sparked widespread, uh, widespread speculation that the FT1 was a super concept. Um, it, be it became abundantly clear within Toyota that it should be the basis for the super design. Together with Toyota project chief designer, Nomu Nakamura, in the summer of 2013, we had our first meeting with BMW at Calti for the initial package study. It was a challenge. It was challenging, and, and to take that step to bring fc ones design into the, the, the super package. Um, you know, to be honest, every dimension was different. Um, so condensing the forms of fc one onto the efficient, high-performance packaging of the Supra resulted in reducing any unnecessary elements and further enhancing the dynamic and powerful character. The design focused on four super attributes, such as the inline six cylinder engine and rear drive layout. It enhances other features such as stretching the hood to highlight the engine, creating the top, the spacious two seat cabin that help accentuate the ultra wide stance on this car. The result is a look unique to Supra, referred as condensed extreme. As on the FT1, the signature headlamp design and the integrated rear spoiler, a functional part of the aerodynamic design, is a homage to the tall hoop white rear wing that was optional on the fourth generation Super Turbo. The FT1 reverse wedge cabin and drag reducing double bubble roof um, that was inherited from the 2000 GT were also carried forward to the new Supra. The whole Toyota team did a really great job capturing the FT1 unconstrained persona. Within the constraints, the new super packaging. I'm really looking forward to driving this car and seeing what I first saw as a truly dynamic sketch on the road. So now let me bring up Tom, um, our subject matter expert, who knows this car inside and out. Tom Shen, chief designer for Cal. All right, there you go. So we had a lot of questions come in during 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 that one. Um, let's let me let me deal with these. Um, Quickly, yeah. <laughs> Dick's still apologizing for giving me a hard time. That's okay, man. Uh, he wants to know: Does it feel like a Toyota? Check back Sunday. Um, it, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble with those guys. So, check, check back Sunday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time for that. Ben's wants to know: What's it weigh? Uh, I think he might have mentioned in that one or coming up in a, another video. Just it's south of 3,400. Uh, a loaded one is like 33. High 33s, so you know if you're looking to get one into autocross trim with uh, some exhaust work, with some, maybe some some lighter wheels, um, you're probably in the in the mid mid 33s for something like that. Um, it, it, overall, not, that's not too shabby for a for a modern car loaded loaded with a lot of equipment. Um, Dave says with the fireplace, we're missing an opportunity to test the flammable properties of various CRC products. Uh, it's a gas fireplace, so I, I don't think it would be that dangerous. Um, Lucius wants to know about the fit and finish. Strong, man. Uh, the one th pictures, unfortunately, don't do the car justice, especially in in the front end. It's I, th th there are still some things about it visually that that bother me a little bit. But there are some really, really pleasing angles of the car, and they're they're tricky to photograph. The front end, especially in pictures, looks really, really bulbous. What you don't really get an impression of is how three dimensional the front fenders are, and the way they they kind of wrap around the front tire area. They look it's a lot more presentable in person in some of the brighter colors, especially like like the matte silver 
uh, red, blue. The white cars and the black cars aren't aren't the best looking ones, but they, they definitely do look better in person than in um, in photos. The roof line still bugs me a little bit from from certain angles. It looks like the roof changes thickness, but the the profile view of the thing is fantastic, and that's the one angle of the car that does photograph really really well. If you see uh, the profile shot in in our our, our promo image is I, I the car looks really really good really proportional um okay let's look, had a bunch of questions come in um somebody mentioned you know it's it's my angela said she uh, she heard me clear my throat yes that was that that was me um yeah justin mentioned uh you know same as a new base model corvette but 150 less horsepower doesn't, doesn't see the attraction. I, I get it, but be careful judging cars by specs alone. And the the Miata is the best example of that I, I can think of. You know, a Miata is very much more than the sum of its specs. And so, especially modern cars, be be careful just looking at numbers and, and making making a, a decision. On, on a car, great place to start. <clears throat> isn't isn't always the 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 the, the final word on, on everything. Uh, okay, so just scanning through here on um, on questions. Somebody's asking about uh, solo classing. Angela is guessing uh, Super Street or A Street. Yeah, I think A Street is probably. Probably a, a pretty pretty fair guess. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really, yeah, I don't see it going into, into super, but um, de I definitely see um, <laughs> CA and uh, John Laughlin's on here dissing me out. Yeah, that'll that'll work work out great for you. Uh, Steve wants to know how the exhaust note is. I I, I really dig it, and you'll hear that later when when I. Um, I play the in-car video. You can you, you can hear the exhaust fairly well. Um, yeah, Zarocco says uh, he thinks the the look kind of gives him a cool Viper vibe. Get to see in person from its best angles, it does look very Viper-like. The when when you kind of rotate yourself around the car, whenever you see Viper, stop and appreciate that because those those are are its most most flattering flattering angles. Um, okay, so let's move on. We've got a bunch of videos to get to. Actually, before we get to those videos, let me, while I got everybody here, please, these shows would not be possible without the folks, uh, where are they? Down here in this corner, especially like our friends from CRC Industries. Um, you can check them out on the web, crcindustries.com. I didn't bring any with me because I don't like to fly with it. But um, yeah, check them out on the web, crcindustries.com. Even better, check them out in a store near you and buy some of that sweet, sweet brake clean or uh, freeze off or power lube or any of the great CRC products. Use them all the time ourselves on all of our project cars because they're awesome, not just because they help us out once in a while, although that doesn't hurt, but we were using their stuff long before they were advertisers in the magazine and supporters of events like our $2,000 challenge. So a uh, big shout out to our friends at CRC. Also. Our good friends at Coney Shocks, Coney-NA.com on the web. I don't care whether you're buying shocks for your tow vehicle, for your track car, for your daily driver, for your race car. Coney has a shock for it. They also have fantastic people there to help you make the right choice. On the web, Coney-NA.com or at great retailers like Tire Rack. And you might see another new one down here. Look at that. Specialty uh, performance products, SPC Industries. I just literally just found out about this today that they are the newest supporters of our show. I don't even know what to say about them except I used some of their products on our old uh, 350Z project. Loved them. I used a set of their adjustable upper control arms. Loved them. Fantastic products. They make all sorts of control arms, uh, suspension bits, alignment correcting products like camber bolts and camber cams and, and shims to help get your car performing at its finest. And uh, we are fans of theirs. And I don't even know if that's what they want me to say about them, but I just literally found out in the last several hours that they are now supporting our show, and we are glad to have them aboard. So check them out. Uh, we'll throw their website 
up in the chat. Yeah, there we go, spcalignment.com. Um, all right, so there we go. So let's uh, let's move on to the next one. So this is the uh, what they call their subject matter expert. Uh, this cat's gonna go over a bunch of specs and, and details. And when we come back, maybe I'll have the robe on. Who knows? Maybe throw some shares out there. We'll see how it goes. All right, we've got a lot of video to get to, so let's get to the next one. Here you go, gang. You got a great day ahead of you, I know that. I'm uh, beyond excited. You know, I was talking to my wife last night. In high school, I would sneak off at study hall and read car magazines all day. That's all I ever did. I wasn't a very good high school student. But uh, it, it's kind of a full circle moment for me to be standing here in front of you telling you about this car when as a kid, all I ever did was read what you were writing. So I'm gonna go over details about the Supra that we hope that you take a look at and, um, and write about and, and tell us what, what your thoughts are. And really, it's really an amazing car. This car takes, it, it's, it's an important car because it has to carry the name forward. So there were certain elements. When, when Tata-san met with BMW, the first uh, elements that they had to decide on were what was this car going to be? Because it had been a long time since we had a Supra. So it was decided very early on that there were some key elements to this car that had to remain. Those key elements are that front engine rear wheel drive packaging, the inline six engine, and in this case, turbocharged like the last two generations of Supra but it has modern features like an eight-speed transmission and that optimal 50-50 weight distribution and extremely good handling. So as we mentioned, there are two grades to Supra. They're called the 3.0, starting just below 50 ground. And there are some distinctive uh, features of this car that allow you to spot it. So in this case, the 3.0 is gonna be set off by gray painted um, brake calipers, and when you get inside, you're going to notice the seats are a mix of Alcaterra and leather. When you go to the premium, you're going to notice red painted calipers, and the interior includes full leather seating. You also get uh, an upgraded stereo system with an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen display, but we'll get more into that in a minute. And of course, the rarest of the three, the launch edition, set up by menacing looking uh, matte black painted wheels, red calipers, and red mirror caps. So looking at this car, you know, a sports car's got to have a sense of presence, got to have eyeball, and Supra is quite <laughs> exciting to look at. The first thing I noticed when I saw the car the first time was its dimensions. I literally said, wow, that's smaller than I thought it would be. To give you a frame of reference, this is our friend the 8.6, which you'll get to drive today as well. But by comparison, if you look at how Supra's dimensions are laid out, though the overall car is very similar in length, the wheelbase is actually four inches shorter. And this was intentional. Not only is the wheelbase shorter, but the track is wider. It's two inches wider in the rear, three inches wider in the front. The idea behind this is to increase the agility of the car to its max potential. Tata-san worked very carefully to ensure that this car was both a great grand touring car, a road car, but also was an effective track weapon. And today you're going to get to drive the car in both scenarios to check that out. Other things about the car, again, it had to look like a Supra. One of the, the, the biggest areas that this car strikes me is looking a lot like the Mark IV, is in the, the, the hood line and in the headlights. The headlights are very modern. It's a six lens LED setup. So three of them are for low beam, three are for high beam. And then we have this LED daytime running lamp, which also serves as a turn signal. It switches from amber to uh, white when you turn the turn signal. I mentioned the wheels, but keep in mind, this car is legit. It's 19-inch wheels, but they are forged wheels. It's a split five-spoke design. 
the 3.0 and 3.0 premium will be giving a polished aluminum and gloss black wheel. And of course, our launch editions are going to give the matte black. All of the, the Toyota Supras coming out this year are going to have the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second. Also keep in mind, this is a staggered setup. Nine inches in the front wide and 10 inches wide in the rear. There are eight colors available on Supra. One of the colors that I think is, um, I want you guys to take a look at when you're out there, is the Phantom Matte. The Phantom Matte color is the first use of a matte finish on a Toyota vehicle. We have one of those cars here today. So as great as the car is to look at, the only way you can have the most fun with a Supra is to be behind the wheel. So, let's look at the interior. When you're inside, you're going to notice that this is a very driver-focused cabin. Everything was designed to maximize the fun of driving. So all the information displays and controls are within easy reach and they're very easily uh, visible. The seats are extremely supportive. And during development, on, on track, our chief engineer, Tadasan, had noticed that his knee was getting sore from all the hygiene turning. So he recommended that we install a right knee pad for comfort when driving. So check that out when you're in the end. <laughs> We have a fan already. So that's another feature. Again, making sure that this car is the best driving experience you can possibly have. So here we see the cockpit. This is where you're going to have the most fun in the car. The dashboard is a slim design, and it's designed to help with outward visibility. And again, all controls and uh, displays are easily seen in one of my favorite aspects of the car are the seats. The seats are very comfortable. I know I've gotten in, I'm a big dude, I don't fit in every sports car, but the Supra's actually comfortable, and part of that has to do with the seats. They're specifically designed for holding performance, because of course we're gonna be taking this thing through turns and corners. They incorporated a lot of feedback from both road and track testing. They're a 14-way adjustable power seat, with four-way adjustable lumbar, and what I like is the backrest width, because I've got a little wider back than most. And most sports cars are very narrow, so this is great because you can adjust it a little more relaxed for a long drive, or a little tighter for a track drive. Good morning, everybody. All right, so there is the first segment with Thomas Kretschmann. He's the, uh, what they call the subject matter guy. We've got another video coming up with him. I know there's a lot of information in there you probably don't care about, but you got to sit through some of that to get to the stuff you do care about. I think there was some interesting stuff in there. I want to uh, run back because we had some good questions coming in on Facebook, especially during that. First off, um, yeah, uh, everybody was pretty impressed how small the car was. We had some 86s here to compare them to today, and... You know, an 80, 86 strikes you with, with how how physically small it is compared to a lot of modern cars. And the Supra doesn't at first. It, it has a little bit more physical presence than an 86 until you see it next to an 86. And then you realize, holy cow, this is not a big car. So, yeah, prop, props to them for, for keeping, things, um, keeping things tidy. Uh, Angela wants to know, was it helmet friendly? Uh, yeah, I think I can probably probably uh, tell you a little bit about about how the interior fit without getting too much into the stuff they want embargoed. But uh, short answer to your question, yes, it was very helmet friendly. In fact, I would I would say it was even more helmet friendly than the '86. Uh, we had a chance to drive some '86s today, and I think the, um, the there was more helmet room for me than there was in in, in the '86. And I think you asked about uh, outward visibility earlier. Um, like any GT car, uh, actually very, very good to the to the front uh, rear, rear three quarters. It's, you know, it's got those big, uh, big, big rear pillars. So you know, there's there there there's a little bit of typical GT rearward visibility, but overall pretty darn. You know, it's no worse than a C5 coupe or or any any number of any 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 other GT cars. Uh, Go back through our Facebook questions here. Uh, yeah, Angela mentioned she likes matte colors. The the matte silver is is gorgeous. 
Um, and one thing I, I thought was really interesting about, about the car is, except for uh, you, you get a, a half inch diameter larger rear brake with the premium package, but you can you get all the performance goodies with the base model, except for a very slightly smaller rear rear brake. But um, I, I thought I thought that was a a cool option. Um, see, Richard wants to know: Do the LED lights move with the steering? I uh, don't know, but probably. I mean, most most premium modern cars do. They were actually. Uh, the, the headlight is, array is actually like a six LED array, so I would imagine that they do have have an articulating function. Um, and okay, I think that gets us caught up. One more video with with this guy with some more interesting information. We're 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 getting there, folks. Um, you know this this car is kind of a big deal, so we're going through. All this stuff tonight. This is stuff that you really don't get a chance to see anywhere else. This is this is what I do for a living. So here we go. Uh, here's Thomas Kretschmann again. And uh, I'll see you in 7 minutes and 15 seconds. Is a brilliant 3 liter straight 6 engine. 335 horsepower, 365 foot pounds of torque. It's a direct injected twin scroll turbo engine. Features dual variable valve timing with lift, but I think one of the most important features here about this engine is where the torque comes in. 1600 RPM, you have max torque. I grew up in the 80s. I've driven 80s vintage turbo cars, as may, many of you might have, where it's step on the pedal and it's wait, 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 and oh my God. That's not the case here. This car has torque way down low. And you're gonna notice that when you're on the track today. You don't necessarily have to get that lower gear. You can stay in the gear you're at because you have enough grunt to get out of the corner. Behind the engine is one of the best automatics ever made. A ZF AHP AC. So keep in mind, when you're driving this car and you're, you're learning about it and how it feels, all of the tuning of this car was done by tata -san and his team. So the engine throttle mapping and the transmission shift mapping was all done by our team. Drive modes. There are many adaptable items on this car that allow you to custom tailor how it works. So in the center console, you're going to see a button marked Sport. Pressing this button will turn all of these elements into sport mode. This will include the shock damping, the steering assist, the throttle mapping, the way the transmission shifts, even the way the exhaust sounds will all change when hitting sport. <coughs> hitting sport again allows you to go in and individually customize these settings for the perfect drive experience. Then there's the VSC modes. Just below the sport button, you'll see the, that track off button. When you start the car, it's in normal mode, meaning that your stability control systems are on. Pressing it once will engage traction mode. Traction mode is the mode that allows a little more wheel slippage. It allows more vehicle drive. It allows you to get to the edge while knowing that you still have a safety net available. If you press and hold the button for three seconds, it turns all the systems off. And that's where you can feel the genuine nature of all of the suspension and drivetrain components working together without any safety net. Supra also comes with launch control. So we said earlier, maybe, I'm trying to remember, did we say what the zero to 60 time was on this car? Does anybody know? 4.1. The easiest way to achieve that 4.1 seconds, 0 to 60 times through launch control. And it's a very uh, advanced system that takes into account vehicle dynamics and engine torque to get you to that number. Supra also features an active differential. It is an electronically controlled differential that uses a single clutch pack to progressively increase differential lockup between 0 and 100%. What's unique about this is that it's looking not only at wheel slippage, but vehicle dynamics as well. 
And in doing so, it can behave like a torque vectoring differential without the twin clutch packs. So in cornering, it is making the best decision in terms of lockup during corner entry, hitting the apex, and then powering out. And getting traction to the ground is done through these excellent Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Our friends at Michelin are here today to talk to you about these tires. They have a unique compound that was developed specifically for this project. And all these components work together to deliver a driving experience that's exceptionally good. And that's really what this car is all about. It's not about the world's fastest zero to 60 time or the highest G cornering. It's about giving you an experience that's uncompromised. And all sports cars have to be a lightweight vehicle in order to maximize that driving experience. And Supra's no exception. So a lot of attention was paid to the weight of the car and where the weight was located. So the car has a very low center of gravity. In fact, it's lower than the 8.6. Weight distribution was scrutinized heavily. It's even front and rear. We feature aluminum doors and hood to reduce weight and lower that center of gravity. Even the rear hatch is made out of composite material. The car is only 3,397 pounds. And the structure of the car is remarkable as well. Torsional rigidity on Supra actually bests the LFA. So that torsional rigidity is something that you'll experience, and Tadasan will tell you where to experience that the most before you leave today. The front suspension uses a lot of aluminum components, again, for maximizing the weight distribution. We also have adaptive dampers on all four corners. It is a double joint McPherson strut in the front, and in the rear, it's a multi-link setup. The adaptive dampers are tuned to respond to vehicle dynamics, and they change their nature when you put it in sport mode. Supra also features an electric power steering system. That assist will vary based on vehicle speed and also will become heavier and more direct feeling in sport mode. The brakes on the Supra, up front, we're going to have Brembo fork piston fixed calipers clamping down on 13.7 inch ventilated rotors. Remember the 3.0, they're painted gray. On the premium and, and launch editions, they're painted red. In the rear, on the 3.0 edition, you're gonna get a 13 inch ventilated rotor with a single piston floating rear caliper painted gray. On the premium launch editions, you get a 13.6 inch rotor, ventilated, ventilated rotor, with a single piston floating caliper painted red. All Supras also come with an electric parking brake. Is a Oh, hi there. Yes, I got the robe on. Um, so uh, this, this looks like what would happen if the Jedi Academy severely lowered their standards for admission. Uh, had some good questions coming during that. John Laughlin, I, 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 I thought the exact same thing that you did when I heard the phrase, only 3,397 pounds. Uh, but that is the world we live in today, except for Camaro four-cylinders, which are somehow unusually light. Everything's big, big and heavy. Um, so at, at least they understand that, that weight is an issue. Scroll back and uh, we'll talk about some of the questions that came in. So... Somebody mentioned uh, electric diffs. It's not really an electric diff. It's it's a mechanical diff with uh, electronic vari variability. It, 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 var it varies the lockup of a mechanical um, interface with varying uh, fluid pressures, I believe. So it's you know it's it, it's a hybrid. So it isn't like uh, like a Ford Focus ST where it's where it's creating diff action through other intervention. It's a physical differential that works. It just uses some like, electronic controls to to affect the physical operation of of the diff 
Um, yeah, Greg Jones, uh, oh hell no, give me studs. Yeah, I, you know, I just about flipped a table over in the conference room when, when they, they showed that. That would be the first thing I would do would be to put, put wheel studs on the thing. But, um, I don't know, wheel, wheel bolts are becoming a thing again, and it's, BMW helped them with it, so what do you, what do you expect? Uh, go through, <laughs> yeah, Joe, Umbrella says the electric parking brake is a killjoy. <laughs> Want to go out and uh, do your parking brake turns in the snow. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, looks like we're, we're fairly caught up with, uh, with that. Okay, so um, one more long video here. This one's really interesting. This is, this is Tadasan. This is the, the chief engineer of, of the car and this, this one's a little chaotic because we're all kind of standing around the car and I was trying to move a camera on a, on a tripod so it shifts around a lot. But one of the things I want you to, to take away from this video is, is just how serious the, these cats are about performance. And yeah, there are, there are a lot of filters these cars have to go through from the engineering rooms to, uh, to, to the showrooms. And, but the, the people that are designing these cars are passionate and enthusiastic and just downright hardcore about them and, and a lot of that comes through in in this this is um, this is a, a really really interesting video so this is uh, chief engineer this is mr. Tata Tata son and he's speaking through an interpreter for most of this so here you go like a little bit of a behind the scenes of just what kind of effort went into uh, the development and uh, what kind of little Easter eggs uh, that he left in the car. Uh, please feel free to ask us questions as we go along. Uh, and then after you drive it, we're sure that you're going to have more questions. Okay. First of all, please, somebody open the front bonnet. Okay. Yes. Can we get a volunteer, please? <laughs> somebody open the, the, the hood, please. So, so you know, the, it takes two to open. <laughs> this is a very fluid, uh, impromptu kind of. Uh, okay. So standard Toyota and Lexus vehicles, you just pull the uh, the hood release uh, once. But this one requires two two pulls. And the reason here is because we have two hood latches. And actually, there is only one other Toyota vehicle that has two hood latches. Does anybody know which car that is? Tando. No. LFA? No. LFA? No. The actually JZ80, 80 Supra. So the chief engineer Suzuki san, who was the uh, engineer of the 80, he was uh, Tada san's mentor, actually. So sports cars designed for high speed uh, needed two hood latches. That was one of his uh, important stickler points. And that's why that one vehicle is the only one with two hood latches. And so when we went into the 90 Supra, that was one of the uh, little heritage points that he made sure that was carried on. So even something as trivial and small as this, uh, they made sure that there is a respect and homage to that. And so, so, some of the other things, uh, if you look at it, so this body has, we talk about a really high structural rigidity for this car. But they've re uh, placed a lot of margin for improvement uh, in the body structure. For instance, right here, if you look here, you can see the uh, thread holes and the indentation already in the airbox on either side. So with the current balance that we've put together, uh, 
with、uh, reinforcement bars installed there, we found that it was too much actually. So,、uh, with、uh, Herwig, our master driver, who actually calibrated the car, who's here with us today, he was the one that said it's a little bit too stiff. So, these are things that we're going to allow you know, aftermarket and other people to use as updates for the, for the chassis. This will probably be one of the first things that third party、uh, parts makers will make. And so, if they start making them now, they'll probably sell a lot of them. So, there's all kinds of hints like that all over the car, for instance. So, if you look at the old Supras, the first thing that everybody did was raise the boost. And of course,、uh, they blew their engines right away. And they had a lot of problems and issues with that. So, your engine, transmission, differential. So, when you raise the power on those, you really need to think about cooling. And that is the, and that's the biggest headache for many of the tuners. So, in this Supra, he's trying to incorporate as much as possible at this production level to accommodate that in the future. So, if you look at the radiator openings in the front, So, when you ask the request to the designers, make it as big as you can, they're like, well, it's hard to really get that beautiful balance. It becomes challenging. But they made it as big as they could right here. And the designers made that a reality. But actually, it's too big. And if you look really closely, the bottom side has been sealed. The bottom half has been sealed. So, for future people who are going to tune it and modify it, that part can be added for extra capacity of cooling. And there's another reason for the, uh, uh, of uh, sealing the bottom half. Just, actually,、uh, when you seal that, it creates a canard effect. So, when you are on the track, you'll be able to feel it.、And、so, it adds vehicle stability. Yes. And so, and then when you need even more cooling, we have the capped ducts that you can see along the car. On the front, and here's the exit point of guard. Entry po exit point, and we have it on the rear as well. And those are to accommodate uh, uh, intake outlet ducts、uh, for all kinds of uh, uh, applications. And of course, the inside ducting you'd have to make on your own, of course, clean. But it also depends on how, what your application is, of what kind of ducting you'd want to use it for. Sometimes you want to use it for brake cooling, you want to use it for engine cooling, and also you want to have more downforce sometimes. You know, you'll just use the outlet、uh, and then you'll increase downforce. So it depends on how you want to use your, your vehicle. But I mean, the reality is when you want to open up、uh, intakes and outlets on the body afterwards, it's, really, it's a really big proposition to do that. So, so that was some of the、uh, things he thought about first. So, engine,、uh, oil coolers, intercoolers. Of course, those are、uh, obvious upgrades. But let's say for the transmission, you want to put a transmission cooler. He's He, he's、uh, added a drain on that and a space so that you can add a transmission cooler. So you'll find that right away. And he's also allocated space near the differential. So you can, it, there's a hole for the drain and space for a cooler there. So, the things that he thought that tuners would want to put on the car, he thinks that it makes life a little bit easier for them. Be like a little bit of a behind. So that's pretty cool.、Uh, that is、um, uh, Tara san. He is the, the chief engineer for the,、uh, the super program. And it, some of the translation maybe didn't come through, but, but what he was talking about in a lot of those, those、uh, little factoids is 
yeah, people complain about fake vents and, and, and fake scoops all the time. This has some fake vents uh, on it that can be easily turned into real vents simply by removing the, the style panel. And maybe for maybe the, the, the sales staff said, oh, that's going to let in too much dust and, and dirt into you know the inside of the fender. But they made all of that stuff functional that can be easily modified by, by the customer and prepped it for a lot of aftermarket stuff that they know is coming for it. So, uh, again, you know, it speaks to, um, uh, you know, this is, speaks into to, to a lot of passion from those engineers. Scroll back and uh, get a couple of these questions taken care of. Um, oh yeah, Angela mentions, uh, sad note, no female journalist. Uh, the, there, this is the third of five waves, and I was kind of looking over the whole roster, and there are... There are a few here this week. Um, I, I will say this was a fairly diverse group of, uh, of folks we had today. They were it, it, a fairly diverse group of, of you know sausage fest, but uh, a diverse group nonetheless. And it, it's it's nice, you know. Um, I'm certainly not the youngest person at these things anymore, but it, you know, it's it's nice seeing people from various backgrounds, from uh, you know, different different marketplaces coming through. And and so yeah, there there was. There was uh, definitely some some diversity here, but but not a lot of, of gender diversity, diversity unfortunately. Uh, somebody said the guys in the gray jackets don't look impressed. Those were all Toyota people, and again, they are on wave three of five, and they were here for close to a week beforehand setting things up. So uh, I, I think that's probably why they are they are not looking <laughs> very impressed because they've heard it all before. Um, let's see. Yeah, they're, they're, they're anticipating future options on this thing. Uh, Robert Permanner says he bumped into Matt Farah, and he, he said he liked the car. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, he was on the wave just prior to here. I, I saw him getting on the bus yesterday as, uh, as, as I was coming in and, uh, and wanted to go say hi, but that, you know, unfortunately was, was not able to uh, go say hi. I've, I've actually never met the dude in person. We've corresponded a few times, but, um, yeah, looking at some of his reviews, I, I, I did hear that, that he was, he was impressed with the car. Um, all right, let's, um, check out, oh, it looks like we're mostly caught up with, with the important questions. Let's get to, so uh, again, I can't give you any driving impressions. But I can show you some in-car video of, of, of the thing. Um, and uh, this doesn't have any commentary. doesn't have any data. We were asked to not include that. But you can hear how it sounds. You can kind of get an, an impression of how it turns into some of these. Please do not judge me harshly. This is the first time I've ever been to the Shenandoah circuit. It is a very, very complex little piece of twisty asphalt. Very fun. But um, had to learn this somebody else's fifty thousand dollar car and a bunch of other journalists. So we, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, I did right by you guys, and you at least get a chance to hear how the thing sounds here. So here is um, two, two and a half, two, two laps of the Jefferson Circuit with just raw out of the the uh, Garmin Verb audio of the Supra. <laughs> and the chuckle and is because the, you, the, the uh, flag the driver's side window is very easy to be able to see you better. So that's your call.
All right, so they're, uh, they're posted without comment is um, is some in-car footage from the Supra. Got some questions coming in from both uh, both Facebook and YouTube, so let's let's deal with these quick before I, I forget what everybody asked. Uh, Dave said this is one of his favorite ribbons of payment. Yeah, I would love to come come back here and, and run run a time trial or something. It was it was a blast. Um, it, it, there's always you come to these things and there's always a little bit of, of nerves when you're in somebody else's car at one of these press launches. You really can't can't go ten, ten tenths. I mean, you you, you, know, you try and come close. You try and give give the car a, a fair evaluation, but ultimately it's you know somebody else's car that hasn't even hasn't even hit the market yet, and you don't want to be that guy. I'd love to come back in a car that, you know, I've got a Haggerty insurance policy on that I could, could write off if I had to. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Shane wants to know, can we put the G-meter up from the Verb, or is that driving impressions? They, I asked them about that, and they, they kind of gave me the answer that made me think that they would rather I not do that until the driving impressions come out, so I have that stuff. We'll get that, that video up um, when the driving impressions come out on Sunday. Uh... And yeah, there were some uh, there were some comments about uh, understeer versus oversteer, and and yeah, I, I get it, I get into a lot of that during during my my drive. I, I did my driving impression stand up today as soon as I got out of the car, um, so you, you'll hear more about that on on Sunday. But um, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get, get into that later. All right, let me go over here to uh, Facebook. Uh, Robert wants to know: cool standard auto or a dual clutch? It is um, it is a ZF eight speed automatic or torque converter auto. So there's been conversation in both these threads today uh, about, you know, is a, everybody likes manual transmissions or, or dual clutches or whatever. Here, here's my position on this. I like to know what gear I'm in, and I like to know how, how I'm going to get to the other gears on either side of that gear, and I like whatever I'm using to put myself in those gears to be positive and predictable. I don't care how I do it. I don't care whether I do it with a stick and a clutch. I don't care whether I do it with, you know, a slap shifter in the middle of the column or paddles. I just want to know that it's going to react in a positive and predictable way and I know what gear I'm in and I know what gear I'm, I'm going to next. There's not one, for me anyway, there's not one single way to get there. You know, there, I've, I've driven fantastic automatic transmissions with with uh, paddle overrides I've driven terrible automatics with 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 paddle overrides I've driven great dual clutches I've driven super mediocre dual clutches you know I've driven fantastic stick shifts I've driven lousy stick shifts so so help me drive the car better I don't care how you do it but help me drive the car the way I, I want to drive it and me me and you we're we're good um, so Angela asked about who does Toyota see this car competing with? That's an interesting question because the car is a little bit of a tweener, I think. It's, it's you know, a loaded 86 is over $30,000, and this is a $50,000 car. I, 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 I don't know where it's going to fit in the market eventually because it doesn't really have a direct competitor except maybe for the, the, the Z4, which it kind of is to, to some extent. But it's you know it's less powerful than a, than a Corvette. It's more powerful than an '86. It's sort of in this this in between nether realm that kind of doesn't exist now. So the question is, can Toyota make a market there? And um, w you know we'll, we'll see. It's a it's a bold call. I know that putting a Supra nameplate on something is not an action undertaken lightly. That is something that that as you've seen with these videos tonight, these people take very seriously. So. Um, yeah, that's, um, Darius wants to know, who is uh, my favorite Toyota rep that I spoke to and why? Um, you know, I, everybody I talked to today was, was really, really cool and, and really passionate. Uh, the, um, you know, listening to, to tata and, and, and his, his approach to this stuff. I mean, that, that dude, that dude's hardcore. Uh, he, he, anybody that designs uh, items into a car. There, there was stuff there that I, I didn't get get to record, but 
Anybody that designs into a car pieces that he knows will eventually be swapped out and makes it easier for the aftermarket to replace those pieces and essentially, you know, baits the hook for him to do that. That's pretty cool. Um, so, but yeah, everybody I talked to, whatever their area of specialty, had a lot of passion for this thing, and and I I dig that. Uh, and also, I got to give a shout out to um, some of the folks from from the event company. They weren't Toyota people, but they're running a, a great event today. So, um, you know, kudos to them. Um, Cut says JG is pushing it. It's a fun fun track, man. It, I I I really really dug it. Um, Yeah, Robert says Cayman Boxster competitor. That you know, I, I can I can see that. Although those are starting to, you know, those are those are kind of getting up in Corvette territory now. I think so. It's like a two or three year old um, competitor. Uh, somebody mentioned about uh, body roll. Um, th those verbs do have a little bit of. Uh, motion smoothing built built in so some of that was was the the the, the camera I, I get into that a little bit in my my, my driving impressions um I, I i don't think it's unfair to say that that uh the body roll is not distracting at all uh, and i think we are caught up so oh uh pat sajak so what kind of person do i see actually putting up the 50k and buying them uh, first and foremost, I see super fans. Uh, I, I think I think all of those fifteen hundred launch editions are gonna gonna be spoken for very very quickly. I, I think just bringing that nameplate back, no matter what they slapped it on, they were they were going to sell some. Beyond that, um, it you know I, I I don't I don't know what people are gonna be cross shopping this this car with. They might be cross-shopping it with Corvettes, but again, a Corvette buyer is a very specific buyer. I don't think they're going to be cross-shopping it with stuff like Mustangs and Camaros. That That's that's a four-seat car buyer. I mean, a pony car buyer is a specific, specific buyer. I think, yeah, I think you might get some, some Cayman Boxster people cross-shopping it. I think you're... <sighs> You might get some people looking even at stuff like Miatas and 86s. Somebody walks into a Toyota dealership looking to buy an 86. Hey, I'm going to have to spend 35 grand on an on an 86. I can get something with a bunch more horsepower uh, that, that that that's a lot gnarlier for fifteen thousand dollars more. I I, I I think there's something to be be said for that too. So really interested to see what happens in in the next six or eight months and see see how these cars um, are sold. There was, they are, they're not making any production promises yet. They're going to build those first 1500. Uh, they're going to go quick. They're going to ramp up production after that, but they aren't really saying yet how many cars they expect to sell or how many cars they even want to sell yet. So I think Toyota's taking a bit, bit of a wait and see attitude as well. Uh, okay, let's get caught up. Um, so uh here's here's what i i want to want to do for you guys oh uh actually literally while we were we were watching that last track video i got another piece of video from the video you, you might have heard during that track video some beeps and boops that was a radio i had in the car i was actually working with the video crew at the track to get some outside footage of the car that just showed up and i downloaded it um during this so this is going to be some outside footage of the car i'm going to show you in a second which is just raw footage i haven't even looked at this yet it could be you know, me peeing behind a tree. I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, this, this will give you a, a, a view, hopefully a view from a couple of corners. Uh, I'm also going to do something else uh, because I'm such a nice guy. This is some of the this is the swag we got. This is a a nice Supra aluminum water bottle. I'm going to give this away to one of our top fans on Facebook and uh, YouTube. I'll find something for you guys tonight. Maybe I'll get with somebody. But uh, I want somebody to um, leave a comment. In down in the um, Facebook somewhere, if you if you share, uh, maybe that will move you up the the list, and I will contact you, and you will win this Toyota Supra uh, official water bottle from from the, the press launch. Okay, let's um, <coughs> man. I was doing loud track talk today, so let's take a look at this um. 
outside the car footage. <coughs> and that'll be the last thing, and then we will get the F out of here. So yeah, that uh, hopefully gave you a little bit better idea of what it sounds like from the outside, and um, you know what the what some of the cornering attitude look, looks like, and just how how uh, hard of a tan line I have on my arms. For God's sakes, um, yeah. Andrew says uh, it looks better when in motion, and wider too. The pictures make it look look narrow. <sighs> yeah, man. And when you see one in person, finally, it's gonna it's gonna look different as well too. It is it's. The car's got some very unusual angles, but it's got some re like it, it's like one of those magic eye photographs. Like you look at it from a certain angle, and you're like, "That's weird," and then you start to orbit around the thing, and there's it just locks into these certain angles where where you think that is a gorgeous, gorgeous car. Then you move five degrees, and it's not so gorgeous anymore. So, um, re yeah, really, really interesting uh, design. Um, Yeah, Matt says he is not mad at how that looks or sounds. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I can't say much about it, but neither was I. Uh, okay, so we, uh, thanks for, this was a long one, but I wanted to give you, give you guys all this information. We are literally, um, you are among the first people in the world to see this much information about the Supra so it, it's uh, if you were ever going to share a video this is the one to share because this is this is stuff that literally is is as close to breaking news as I will ever get remember we're going to give um, give this Supra water bottle away to one of our Facebook top fans uh, YouTube I'll find something I'll, I'll steal something from the mini bar for you guys uh, but yeah let's um, celebrate the, the, the fact that we had so many great top fans if you're a top fan Look for a, a message from me, and we'll we'll get you this water bottle. I see a lot of likes coming in. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, all right, before we go, <laughs> Jason says he needs a drink of water. I need a drink of water. Uh, before we go, please, please spare a thought. Uh, you got to stick around for this part because it's very important. Go, go to the store, buy something from CRC. You know you're going to use it. You know you need it. You know it's good. They support shows like this. They support events like the $2,000 Challenge. They are fine people, and they make fine products on the web at crcindustries.com. Even better, in a major retailer near you. And if you should happen to find yourself at their social media, at their Facebook page, Maybe just pop something on there that says, hey, we appreciate that you guys support GRM Live. They read that stuff. It means a lot to them. We appreciate it when you do stuff like that. Also, the folks at Coney Shocks, Coney-NA.com on the web. Or call them up. Talk to Lee Grimes. He is a fantastic gentleman and a very, very knowledgeable guy, as is everybody at Coney. If you're looking for shocks for your track car, for your street car, for your race car, for your tow vehicle, they more than likely have them. They can make a recommendation on what would be best for you, and they will put a quality shock on that car of yours, whether it's a RAV4 or a BMW M4. Got a great shock for it, Coney-NA.com. And our newest sponsor, SPC Industries, whether you need control arms, whether you need camber bolts, a whole host of other stuff, literally hours ago i found out that they were sponsoring the show so i just i found a logo i threw it on on the screen and we we will be able to tell you more about them next week we are excited to have them on board next week we will be at the ultimate track car challenge probably going to be a wednesday or sorry a thursday night show next week 
And we're just going to be coming to you live from the tech line at the um, Ultimate Track Car Challenge. So, it, probably going to be a schedule change. Might be a little earlier than usual. You can find out about that first if you text GRM Live, G R M L I V E, to 31996. We send out text alerts on schedule updates, on content updates. Just stuff having to do with the show and with the magazine. Nothing weird, nothing creepy. It's um, totally free. Just, uh, you know, any, any text charges apply, but no additional charge for it. So GRM Live, GRM L-I-V-E to 31996, and we will send you updates on the show. All right, gang, that is it. Ah, thank you. This was, um, this was a long one, but again, this is... Uh, the, uh, I am excited to be able to bring this to you. Um, uh, you are literally among the first people in the world to see all this information. And it was it was uh, fun sharing the time with you and wearing that robe and sitting here in front of the fire with you. Going to take one last run through here and see um, if uh, we have any questions that I missed. Uh, David says he would have expected two big bottles with the Fast and Furious influence. Yeah, it's actually a bottle hidden under a seat. So um, that's what's going on there. Uh, so, uh, somebody said Japanese Alpha. Um, that, yeah, uh, good good way to put it. Um, oh, and somebody mentioned that Tommy Milner uh, lives up up here in Middleburg. Um, it's a beautiful area. Uh, he's he's. He's lucky to live in such a nice place. Woo! All right, gang, that is it. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, thanks to the folks at the Salamander Resort here in Middleburg for having such great internet that I was able to bring this uh, show to you tonight. We'll see you next week from the Ultimate Track Car Challenge. Sunday evening, 6.01 p.m. Eastern, we will have more super information going onto our Facebook page, going onto our YouTube page uh, when we are able to give you driving impressions. I, I recorded my driving impressions today, and as soon as I got out of the car, I was you know still sweaty and stinky. Um, I, I'm never not sweaty and stinky, but uh, so you'll be able to have access to that information as soon as the embargo lifts. And in the meantime, Anybody else you, you see that was here, please go support them. There are a lot of great journalists here bringing you great information on um, on this car that may or may not be great. I cannot say yet. It's pretty good. Um, so we will see you guys again next week. Woo! All right. Good night, everybody. Uh, for the entire staff of Grassroots Motorsports, thanks to Colin back home working our social media tonight. Great job. Uh, thanks to the entire staff of Grassroots Motorsports Magazine who is scattered to the wind this week in various places. And thanks most of all to you guys on Facebook and on YouTube for watching us every week. I'm JG Pastor Jack. This is another edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live presented by CRC Industries. We'll see you again next time. Good night, everybody. Now, I just have to sit here for a couple minutes because um, we don't have anybody to sweep the camera away to a pleasing, pleasing view. So this is... This is the awkward post-show moment. <laughs> okay, bye everybody.